Time is tough. But every cloud has a silver lining. Together, we need to develop a positive vision to address challenges and difficulties our businesses face. In order to face the current and future challenges of this industry, we have to work together. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Challenges for Caterers, our third episode. Today's, today we're going to specially focus on unfair competition. And uh, we apologize for 10 minutes late on the show. Uh, unfair competition is what we are going to concentrate on today. And today I have some distinguished guests. And on the left, I have Mr. Bala Ayer, an online marketing specialist. Uh, next to him, uh, I have Mr. T. Jones, director and lead consultant for Center of Innovative and Leadership Navigation London. On my far right, I have Mr. Mujahid Choudhury, Senior Vice President, BCA London. And I have, on my immediate right, I have Dr. Paltu Rajandata, Lead Academy of Business and Retail Management. As I said, the focus is going to be unfair competition. Um, we have lots of our caterers, our restaurants, our takeaways, where the competition is fierce, not only online, but also offline. It's a discount culture has emerged. If you go online to different platforms, you see that this restaurant or this takeaway is giving 30% discount, other ones giving 25% discount, other ones giving 40% discount, buy one, get one free, and, and so on and so forth. Sometimes I wonder, um, after giving all these discounts, do these business owners make any money? Do they take anything home, or are they basically surviving? And when the VAT bill comes, or, uh, or the rent comes, or the rate comes, or they, they struggle to pay these bills. So this is what we would like to concentrate on today. And I would like to start off with uh, Mr. Mujahid Choudhury, uh, uh, Senior Vice President of BCA. You are representing a lot of our caterers uh, throughout the country. Right. And what do you have to say about the subject, about the unfair competition? Well, uh, thank you. Thanks, MTB, to put us in this position to say on uh, behalf of Bangladesh caterers in general in Great Britain. Uh, as you know that we are living in market economy, and market economy always a competition. And there is a golden rule, fittest will survive. And <coughs> first of all, we witnessed last 50 years of uh, golden age of Bangladesh curry industry, which is leading uh, British economy. And within the uh, golden year, era, we have seen so many uh, big, big industry grown, like uh, million to multi-million, even they are uh, far more than this. But the poor guy who works sweating hard work, cooking in the kitchen, running the restaurant seven days, sometimes almost 24 hours, you know. So these guys are still there. But by this time, uh, those people been used by the big companies and uh, company like the uh, technology and so on. So first of all, one thing is sure that, you know, when industry grows, automatically the competition grows. And uh, those who are clever, those who have got money, uh, they grow faster than anybody else. But we're talking about, concentrate on the, on the competition. Competition, if you, if yeah, you, I'm coming go, on that. If I'm you go online, you can see all these discounts. Yeah, that's, I'm coming on that. Yeah. On that uh, score, the technology, it, we, we are living in a technology age. Technology is must. Uh, previously, people put an ad on paper manually through the door, but nowadays people are not interested. Well, we, we used to see that in, in the past, where people used to say, eat as much as you like for yeah, 399. Yeah, so those days are gone, but those now it's all online. On online. And online, <coughs> what happened, you know, as you see the uh, Bangladeshi restaurant or caterers, 
uh, their profit margin, as you look that, is not that great because they work hard and uh, the margin that my hard work, I put it there and I'll make, make money that way. But there is a calculation, of course, when you go through technology. So technology, when it comes, like a onla online, online trade, uh, they lure the small trader that I can promote your business, double, triple. And people are dreamer that, oh, why not technology? Everybody has got technology, mobile phone, etc., etc. So I'll use the online and so on. Once they hooked on it, without knowing that what is the... Yeah, but they're, they're afraid if they do not give the discount, their next door is giving. So, so they have to. They feel is that they have to give the discount well, or the customers won't come to that them. Is, that is true. But what happened, you know, if you put manual ad bar, manual ad bar, you can stop it. But if you go on online ad bar, it's, it's sign up for one year, two years, sometimes... I'm sure you can call the online companies and, and change those straight away. Yeah, but Manual it's, not, is, it's, is, it's harder than online. No, it's not. It's not that easy. Once you signed, before you realizing it, you giving but your. Do, you your organization be CA. You don't have this. Your members. You don't have people uh, talking about this or being concerned about this. And uh, there's no movement with the, with the organization to stop unfair competition. Well, uh, th what happened? You know, the uh, s if it is not happen, we you cannot cry. But it's now happening. So everybody is concerned. And, and, and has your organization made any movements? Of course, yes. Um, as, as you understand that, you know, the Bangladesh Catering Association throughout the country, uh, we have got 14 regions and up and, up and down the road. All this. What have you done about it? I know, I know you're throughout your... Well, uh, what we have done, we, uh, we everybody, through the media, we, everybody, we, we go through them to uh, local-based... Uh, uh, regions said that that whatever you do we are not uh, telling you to stop the ad but read it what is the terms and condition and when you construct your menu if you don't have budget for advertisement then your price got to be accordingly so sometimes what happened they put a menu which is in January yeah. Yeah, yeah. and they put I'd like to, uh, yeah, I understand that, but I'd like to bring the, the, some of the guests onto this. So, uh, Dr. Rajan, uh, you're a lead business uh, retail management. You have experience in this sector. Do you understand what's happening with the catering sector on the, on the unfair competition? Part? I think I have some, uh, some understanding. As in before we actually talk about the unfair competitions, which is happening online, we must understand the basic challenges facing, uh, are facing by the catering industry. Second, we have to understand the trends in the market. Uh, the trends can be internal, can be external. Then we have to understand the marketing aspect of the catering industry. When you talk about the marketing aspect, because the online marketing or unfair competition within the online, it is on the fraction of the marketing, big marketing, the area domain. So if you look at the, actually uh, the, the basic challenges we are facing nowadays, one of the basic challenges is that the demographic consumption revolutions the changing consumption patterns that people behavior towards Indian restaurant. But before I move to that, I would like to say this is an industry of 4.2 billion industry. You know, this 4.2 billion, I keep on hearing about this in every single show I go to. Where does this figure come from? I just, I just, I was looking actually the mental figure 2003 that caters in industry, Indian catering industry is a 4.2. So it's a mental figure. Mental figure. One of the Indian restaurants, which is worth of 1.8 billion, I was talking to him, is a massive industry. We should proud about this industry, authenticity, good food, variation, taste, aroma, smell, yeah, but and the consumers. Don't you feel that, I mean, I, mean, we say, I don't want to go away from the topic, but as soon as you talk about Indian food now, don't you automatically think the uh, people, the new youngsters think Indian food is That is what I'm talking. Indian I was reading. They, 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 they want to go for a salad bar. I mean, you see in London, lots of salad bars. Nah, you, you, you said good things. Second point, I would like to bring it. I was just reading a, a, a research paper commissioned by Queen Margaret University, they actually conducted research among the most of the Indian restaurants in Edinburgh. They have identified five consumer segments. One of the consumer segments is only 4%, that is a high end, who likes actually healthy options. Now, second consumers, which is the highest 33, we call it grappling guilt. Means we would like to take the taste of Indian food, but we feel guilt in that sense. There is no healthy option because most of the Indian food high in salt, saturated fat, 
high calorie, maybe sometimes sugar. Yeah, but, but on, on, on the Indian restaurants, if you, if you look at some of the tandoori dishes we have, which is like grilled chicken tikka, yeah. or, but they are not, they are no, not heavy. They are very good. So what I'm saying, first we have to understand the trends, trends towards the consumption pattern. Trends so, why, why, so why aren't the industry pushing that? As, as like a salad alternative or, or That's a health alternative. So therefore, by understanding the trends within the market, the, I think the Indian uh, is a business that should focus on that to fulfill the needs and wants. Anyway, I'd, like, I'd like to come back, come back to the main topic. Which no, is third the, topics I'm coming <laughs> now. So when we're talking about online, when we're talking about online, unfair competitions, we don't say that, unequal competitions. That is happening by the industry. So you have to look at why it is happening. Who actually create that competitions? Is it the internal organization? Is it among the Indians or the, the concentration of larger suppliers, like the big superstores that are actually selling? Or other organizations? We have the yeah, Japanese. But, but OK, let, let, let me come back to this just for one minute. In, in the past audience, to do competition, unfair competitions, they call it, you had to print your menu, you had to do a leaflet. And if you put on your window, buy one, get one free. Everybody else in the street or in the town would know about it. Now, I'm from Cardiff, and I remember back in the uh, early 90s that we had some restaurants who were doing uh, um, buy, you know, buy it as much as you like. And in Swansea, actually, I remember back in the early, early 90s. And the restaurants got together, and they got it off. You know, you cannot do it as much as you like for $1.99 or $2.99. Uh, but now it's so easy. You can follow up, phone up your online aggregator and just put an offer on. And you don't have to phone up. They phone you and they pressure you to give a discount. Because if you don't, somebody <laughs> else will. And, and they say your next door is giving 40%. Unless you give 40%, you will not get any, uh, any business. And now you're pressurized to give discount. How much margin can, is, can is, can is can our, our can. Industry, industry making? I'd like to uh, bring uh, Mark Tom, uh, Thomas, a lead consultant in Center for University Leadership on this. Uh, the culture that we have now, whereas before the restaurant and, and takeaways were giving their discount themselves, mm -hmm. now they are forced to give it by the online aggregators. What do you have to say about that? Well, you've made a very uh, interesting point here. I mean, <coughs> external factors are playing a very major part in this. But let's not forget that these external factors, particularly with regard to new, new technology, are actually providing many caterers with a whole new way of engaging with customers if they're prepared to embrace it instead of fearing it. Um, you're seeing a whole series of applications being developed, websites like Hungry House, Curry's Online, Just Eat. They're all endeavoring to cater to people's need, and that need is due to so shortage you are, you of are time. Pro -online I believe it can have a positive role. Uh, the point that Dr. Data makes about but supermarkets but is a about, very what, interesting What about one. that uh, the competition, the you know, unfair competition, these online aggregators are phoning up and asking the restaurants to give the discounts and takeaways to give discounts where before they didn't? Well, there's, there's going to be pressure, and the pressure comes from a very crowded market indeed. You're up not just against other caterers in your sector, you're actually up against other international cuisines now. Britain is effectively the culinary capital of the world. So whereas 30, 40 years ago, you had a choice of going for an Indian meal or a Chinese meal or possibly so, an Italian, so, it's so become far I more complex. I understand that, Mark. So for you, this is, this is something they should embrace, this I, online big Up marketing. to a point, but now, we mustn't engage in, like, in a race to the bottom. And I this is the danger. I, I understand that. Uh, I'd like to bring Bala uh, onto this. Bala is an online marketing specialist. Uh, he's been working in the industry with the restaurants for a long time, but he's also got experience from the travel agency. Now, that sector went online. It's one of the first businesses to go online. If you remember with uh, lastminute.com and other online businesses where the f in, in the late 90s who went online, much, much before the restaurant industry. And Bala, You've got experience in this sector. You've got clients in the travel, travel agencies. What do you think that our restaurant, restaurant sector will, will benefit or, or are we in danger of driving the prices down? Are we in danger of businesses going out with this, with this drive to the bottom, uh, so, whereas the restaurants give everything away to the yeah. online platforms and, and, and to the consumers and take nothing home? Sure. So let me first uh, give you a perspective of what's happening with the online aggregators who bring you customers in, supposedly. The online aggregators are, are all private listed equities, they've got private investment, and the whole interest of these 
online aggregators are to create, they are valued as per the transactions that they create. Yeah? For them, the transaction, the number of transactions that they do is of importance, not the value or how the restaurants are getting impaired. The value is also them. important because they take a commission on the value of the orders. So I do understand. But as you know, in the online uh, valuation game, the, they, everybody understands that it's going to be bigger tomorrow, greater tomorrow. They don't mind that even if it's a company. For example, a company like, let's say, YouTube or others have not made a single, you know, they have not made profits yeah, but for unlike, a long time. Unlike, unlike I'm, I'd like to bring that in, bring, you know, come in here. Maybe YouTube hasn't made a profit in other companies, but the biggest online aggregator in the United Kingdom, Just Eat, has made millions and is now uh, worth 2.8 billion. And a majority of that comes from the Indian or Bangladeshi restaurant sector. And they make millions. They're the one, of, one of the newest online businesses which make loads of money. And it's all back of this industry. So let me give you an example of what happened to the travel industry since I have got a uh, few clients who are involved in the travel industry. They were all very big businesses in the offline space in the sense that they used to sell tickets and they were, you know, doing very well. And when the online phenomenon came, they all went online. They spent huge amount of money in marketing themselves and putting search engines and then depending on um, search engine optimizations. And they started getting into this concept called meta search engines. Now, meta search engines is that you have your website where a customer can put a search <coughs> parameter and get the best possible ticket, lowest value ticket. So you start getting dependent on the meta search engines. The, the travel agents were getting millions of turnover, millions of turnover. The turnover was never a problem, but the margins were shrinking by the day. Same thing happened to the eateries, the Absolutely. restaurant industry. And what was happening was they were so dependent on the meta search engines, these travel agents, that if they don't reduce the price of the ticket and they take a huge cut on their margins, and if they don't pay the meta search engine for every customer acquisition, they were losing out. Because every, every other day there will be a new player who is willing to throw in more money to acquire a customer. Now let me go back to what you mentioned about multi-cuisine you know, uh, industry in UK. The challenge I feel from the Bangladeshi catering and the Indian food segment I feel is the commoditization of curry. So it has become a commodity, not mm. a speciality anymore. Absolutely. Mm. So what mm. is happening is if you're comparing A restaurant to a B restaurant and if he's offering 30% discount, remember we are dealing with food, we are dealing with quality, we are dealing with taste, we are dealing with a lot of subjective issues. It is not selling an airline ticket because an airline ticket is an airline ticket. You are either sitting on a on a you know, you're sitting on a Boeing or you're sitting on an Airbus. But I suppose serve service mm. can be better. Absolutely. Different, uh, so airlines. I feel that our caterers, we have to get away from commoditization of the curry industry. How can how can anybody just get in buy a curry because it's thirty percent cheaper? The curry house has to obviously have to have a better menu, a better food quality, and that's exactly where the skills come into play. You know what are how good their food is. Mm -hmm. So for example, there are still restaurants who don't give any discounts and still be, you know, getting customers. Some restaurants may not be online. Yeah. 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 And they're still busy. Mm -hmm. So let me give an example. So the discount culture, which we are blaming purely on online, is not just an online phenomenon. Last four or five years, the discount culture has come into the yeah, British but, but consumer attitude. Don't you attitude. feel that the online is not an online phenomenon, but has the online has a massive effect. By the, remember what you said, these companies are all about orders and numbers. So they are phoning these restaurants yes. and yes. pressurizing Absolutely. to give a discount. Whereas before, this pressure did not exist. I agree. They either volunteered themselves to give offers because they weren't busy. Yeah. Now they're busy, but somebody else phoning up and saying, you're busy, but you won't be unless you do this, X, Y, and Z. Yeah, that is, that, that is where I feel uh, what he was mentioning about the caterers I feel somewhere we also need to give them the marketing understanding because what is happening is a lot of effort goes in to the kitchen, to the service levels and all those stuff, but very little effort goes into marketing. So the moment a restaurant is put up and the only marketing now, online guys do provide a good marketing. They widen your reach and scope okay. of the restaurant, but well, you also mm. get dependent on them. I totally, totally understand that. So we've all had a, had a say and and 
um, Mr. Bajaya said this is the, the golden era. I don't know if the golden era is gone or is still, it's still here. We'll come back to that. We've talked about the online uh, discount culture, the pressure that we are under to put discount on. Uh, and when we come back, I would like to pick this up uh, on the pressure we are under fr uh, from online aggregators to give discounts. And what is the solution? How can we tackle it? How do we get out of it? And then eventually we do business to make money. How do we make money? See you in a minute.